Biden says coal with the sea was robust, but China doesn't seem to concerned. Hong Kong CNN will the ear of the ox bring China hoped for reset in relations with the United States. As the country prefers to celebrate the lunar new year, albeit in a strictly limited coronavirus fashion, Chinese leader Xi Jinping had a phone call with U.S. President Joe Biden, the first time the two men have spoken since the latter's election. Like many things in the post-Donald Trump era, the call was notable in large part for its normality, a return to how things were prior to 2016. According to a consi concise White House readout of the call, Biden underscored his fundamental concerns about Beijing's coercive and unfair economic practices, crackdown in Hong Kong, right, human rights abuses in Xi Jinping, and increasingly assertive actions in the region, inclu including toward Taiwan. In briefing reporters, both before and after U.S. officials, officials played up Biden's willingness to confront C and his long history of engaging with China, having met C himself several times when Biden was a vice president to Barack Obama. Modern day historians can certainly confirm that there are few president who came into this shop with more of the history on engaging with the Chinese leadership. White House Press Secretary Jan Pakti said Thursday, adding that the call was robust and comprehensive. Comprehensive it might have been, might have been but according to Chinese state media, what robustness there was a did not result in any tension or bad feeling, quite uh, the opposite. C. Biden telephone call sent positive signals toward state news agency Xinhua said in the commentary, adding that Biden had the privilege to communicate in the spirit of mutual respect and to improve mutual understanding and avoid miscommunications and miscalculation. In a separate summary of the call, Xinhua quoted C as seeing the Biden. You have said that America can be defined in one word, possibilities. We hope the possibilities will now point toward an improvement of China-U.S. relations. That account, that account went into considerably more detail about the call than the White House readout, and yet the issues of Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Xinjiang, such pro pivotal points according to Washington's account, are relegated to a single sentence in the 14th paragraph. C is quoted as dismissing Biden's concern out of hand, saying all three areas are China, China's internal affairs and concerned China's, China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The U.S. side should respect China's core interests and act prudently. She is quoted as saying, Without a recording of the call itself, there is no way to tell which account is the most accurate in their summaries. Both sides are communicating to the domestic audience, 
Biden in claiming to be top on issues of human rights seen in saying he was equally top in pushing back. These apparent differences is severe something of the difficulties facing Biden in dealing with China, a country he recently described uh, as America's most serious competitor. Though Biden may wish to appear tough on China and may pursue policies that take his stance beyond the rhetorical, he's, he's dealing with a country that is more powerful than he has ever been, one that weathered and intensively hostile Trump administration and has come largely out of coronavirus pandemic stronger and more secure, while the U.S. remains mired in varying degrees of political and social strife. He is also dealing with a country that is more than adept at playing this game. The reactions to Biden call in China is that it represents a chance for a new beginning, suggesting Xi and his administration are unconcerned by Biden's seemingly tough stance. Biden is not the first U.S. leader in recent years to address uncomfortable issues when talking with senior Chinese officials and diplomats. And as previous U.S. administrations have shown, the denouncing Beijing publicly doesn't necessarily preclude the two sides from working together. Bill Clinton, who once condemned the butchers of Beijing following the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre, also lobbied for China to join the World Trade Organization, called WHO, massively boosting the Chinese economy and the country's standing on the global stage. His successors, George W. Bush and Barack Obama, while occasionally experiencing moments of tension with Beijing, also sought to partner with China on issues such as North Korea, Iran, and cybersecurity, as well as boosting economic engagement. In a visit to Beijing in 2009, Obama's Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said that Washington's lobbying on issues of Tibet, Taiwan, and human rights can't interfere with the global economic crisis, the global climate change crisis, and the security crisis. The biggest differences that Trump presented to his predecessor was a willingness to blow up the U.S. China relationship entirely. To, de to date, Biden's administration has been happy to retain most of Trump's tariff and sanctions as a negotiating tool, if nothing else. And this week, Biden ordered the Pentagon to review its China strategy, while continuing to send forces to the South China Sea. However, the Biden administration has also made it clear there are issues such as climate change in which the two sides share a national interest and which it will seek cooperation with Beijing. Of more potential concern to China, Biden has also suggested he could rally European leaders and other allies more willing to listen to him than Trump in opposing Beijing on various issues. So how this gels, gels with also wanting Chinese engagement in other areas remains to be seen. In a call between Biden's Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and the Chinese diplomat 
Yang Jie Chi, Yang Jie Chi, the latter said, which side should focus on taking care of its own domestic affairs, adding that no one can stop the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Since Clinton, Washington has been criticized by China hawks for being too soft on Beijing, for not using the leverage it had it had while the two powers were unequal. Biden is perhaps the first U.S. leader for whom this is not necessarily an option, and he will be dealing with the superpower that is one that is on an equal footing.